products that are going to expand your existing collection, products that you're going to get years of use out of, which I think... Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are going to do an exciting video and that is my favorite products, not just from 2023, but from previous years as well. Kind of some of my go-to products, things that I reach for all the time, things that are versatile, things that I think are really good staples, not only for my collection, but maybe yours is something that you resonate with as well. Uh, this video is sponsored by DK Beauty, so thank you so much for sponsoring this video. DK Beauty carries all of the products that I'm gonna share in this video. They have like a one-stop shopping for all of the different products that I share with you guys quite often. Uh, we are going to go through some products from Fusion, from Coco and Claire, from Clear Jelly Stamper, from Opre, just some really great staples. Speaking of Clear Jelly Stamper, DK Beauty has them for 20% off for the month of December, which is an excellent promo, and we're going to go through a ton of different products in this video. But if you're looking for some more of my recommendations, definitely check out my more recent uh, favorite stamping products video. Products that are going to expand your existing collection, products that you're going to get years of use out of, which I think is something that is so important when uh, all these new items are kind of shared with us and there's tons of new releases all the time. It's like, yeah, I really want that. I think that would be great. But are you actually going to use it? I'm going to go through a bunch of products that are going to be good for all year round. So let's jump in and let's get started. I'm going to do most of this video voiced over. I just think it'll be better for me to kind of explain what I'm doing for the tutorials. Uh, but the first thing I did want to talk about and mention is is this particular Opry Gelax tip that I use. Uh, this is in the shade Whitney. I love this and I use this a lot for tutorial videos. I use this a lot for press-ons for backgrounds. Um, I only got them in the short almond because this is one of the most popular uh, shapes. And the reason that I got this is for backgrounds for nail art that are light because that way I don't have to create more bulk by using different gel polishes and layering up different colors. I can just grab these colored tips and particularly this one especially for winter time too for like snow nails and you have at least one layer ready to go they they are just a milky white tip and uh, so i did want to mention these tips in particular but also all of the colored tips and I, you know what i'll show you those while we're chatting here other neutral tips so they have lila they have mia they have alex and then they have Maisie as well so four different more neutral tones of press-ons or Gelax tips if that's how you use them as well, but as a press-on artist, I use these for press-ons. These are fantastic to work as backgrounds, so again, you don't have to paint your nude layer down. If these are the kind of nudes that you're looking for, you'll find just because they have the color to them, you don't need as many coats when you are doing your gel polish, and they're great for like lighter tones in that sense. It's like more of like a darker neutral, like a medium one. This is probably my most used one for like neutral backgrounds. These are the designs that we are going to be creating in this video and I'm gonna be sharing a ton of tips with you. So the first one we're gonna start with this is really cool like white on white lace look. So we're gonna start by prepping our tips. I just like to file that little thing off of the edge <laughs> that on most of the tips that Opry has. And uh, sometimes I will back file it too just to make sure there's no like weird lip for when you're painting your gel polish. Then I'm gonna go in with some of the Opry tip primer. I do this with all of my press-ons and in all of the steps here in case they're not kind of included. This is just kind of how I prep these tips. Uber Beach, you guys have heard me talk about this color so much. I love this milky white sparkle. It is just perfect for any sort of winter designs, lace designs, wedding designs. Definitely a go-to for me. Because the background of that tip was white, I'm only gonna do one coat of the Uber Beach. I kind of like the clear look of it too. You will see me use the Coco and Claire matte top coat as a base for basically all of my stamping designs. And I do this for multiple reasons. I'm gonna share a bunch of them throughout the video. Uh, particularly though, if I'm using a glitter gel polish, it does kind of fill in the grooves of that glitter and makes a more of a flat surface to stamp on. So we're gonna use this stamping plate here. It was a new release this year and I absolutely love that lace image in the corner, especially for this technique that I'm gonna share with you guys. Guys, we're gonna do a white on white on white so we're taking number 93 stamping polish which is actually like a milky white stamping polish and it was in my top must-haves uh, because I love doing this technique with it then we're gonna use a brighter white stamping polish I'm actually using the sticky white because I find that it takes a little bit longer to dry than the normal white which I kind of like and I do find it slightly more pigmented too so this is actually my go-to white and I'm just gonna stamp that along the grooves here and I really like how this lace image turns out definitely could 
do it with different colors too, but I love the white on white on white. A staple technique of mine is to create ocean nails with lots of depth and layers. We're going to do this with a couple of different techniques. So I'm actually going to use this see-through tip, but if you don't have a see-through tip, you could just work on a clear one or you could work on like a blue painted down already. Uh, so I'm going to do my prep like we talked about at the beginning here. These three gel polishes are my staples for ocean nails. Now Fairies in the Mist is a fantastic milky white. It has just such a great consistency and then the light blue and the dark blue together with the white just make the best kind of ocean nails. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this down on my ring palette and then I'm just gonna take the brushes that are in the gel polish and I'm gonna marble them very loosely on top of this tip here. You could use a blooming gel as your base but you gotta keep in mind your like the thickness of the nails that we're gonna create with all of this marbling. So I prefer just to marble on like a dry background. Now I initially went in with this kind of mini striper brush here and you can create some really cool techniques with it but it's not my go-to for marbling. My go-to marbling brush is actually the Coco and Claire Ombre brush. Now mine has seen better days as you can see here, but I actually think that it helps with the different marbling that I'm gonna do with it. So you'll notice when I'm marbling, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the color from my ring palette and drag that through the different colors and that creates a really cool technique with it. We're gonna cure it, then we're gonna take some of this liquid chrome product, which is something that I'm still kind of playing around with from Coco and Claire, but I do like adding it on top of say a nail look like this and just dabbing it on because it kind of looks like a flake if you don't have the liquid chrome and you do have flakes in your collection though you can definitely go in with some different flakes which is another staple of mine and uh, just kind of dab it in your dispersion layer now my next step for this is to go back in with some of that milky blue color and go over top of the gel polish look look at how cool that looks it gives it such a cool depth design to it now when you are doing marbling flakes any of these type of things you can add a little bulk to it so I am going to go in with my matte top coat before I do any stamping it's going to smooth everything out we are going to use this stamping plate which is called sunken treasures I believe and it works great for creating like a scenery type of design for your ocean nails and I am going to go in with some of this white pearl uh, chrome on top of another stamper and we're going to use my sticky stamping polish in white again here which is just a, such a staple for my collection I'm going to stamp down the kind of scenery image that I liked the best go in with my chrome stamper immediately and this is going to create a really nice pearl look to your stamping images I did decide to go in and add a little bit of seaweed on top just because this nail was so long but if you had a shorter nail you wouldn't have to create so much design like this uh, but I really like this stamping plate for ocean nails because it makes it look like a little ocean scenery which is just such a go-to for me if I have an order for ocean nails we're gonna top coat with a shiny look here and this is how it turned out so much depth and dimension with these techniques Okay, let's do a sweater set of nails with one of my favorite colors for fall and winter. It is just such a beautiful gel polish. It has like flecks of gold in it too. And it's got this really pretty burgundy look to it. It looks really cool and matte too. So we're gonna do two layers down. Again, go in here with your matte top coat. Now this is imperative to a sweater design. And sadly, I have forgot that so many times and then you have to go redo the nail, it's not fun. So we're gonna use this stamping plate from Clear Jelly as our guide for our sweater uh, lines. And I'm gonna use a gel polish that matches the base you could also use the clear sticky stamping polish too that would work really good uh, I'm gonna stamp that down where I want it and then I'm gonna go back in with that gel polish that we used at the beginning and another Coco and Claire brush that I love it is uh, kind of like their mini striper brush actually is this Coco and Claire this might be a fusion brush both of those brush brands are fantastic though um, I'm pretty sure this one's Coco and Claire but anyway I'm gonna go in and paint my lines down like this make sure you're anchoring your pinky and you are going as straight and still as you can when you are following the lines. I'm going to use the Coco and Claire dotting tool and go in with the little dots that were along the side here. After you are done creating the image, do not care. You're going to take some like gel art powder. You could also use like a clear acrylic powder too. And I like to just use like a nail tip to scoop this on. It makes the perfect scoop and then I can just kind of tuck it in that bottle as well. And you're going to put down your powder until it is completely matte. You might have to 
do this a couple of times and you can see I'm kind of just making sure I got everything. Make sure it's really well cured before you go in and brush it off. This is my favorite brush that I like to use for removing chrome or powders or anything like that. If you want your sweater to be even more raised up, just repeat those steps at least one more time as well. But this is how the design turns out. These type of sweater looks are so popular and that stamping plate just makes it so easy. So next we're going to do some clouds, which is highly requested ever since I shared that cloud stamping plate in my favorites video. So I like to use this Opry Sky High gel polish color. I think it is just the best light blue. And we're going to use the Whitney tips, which is that white base. And we're going to do our normal prep like we talked about at the beginning here. Once those are ready to go, go in and do just one coat of this Opry blue. It is so pigmented on its own. You do not need more than one coat I found with this one. I am going to take my matte top coat again for two reasons. I'm going to work with some alcohol inks, but we're also going to do some chrome stamping. So you need a matte surface. I prefer for both of these looks. When I'm doing cloud nails, I like to use the Coco and Claire white alcohol ink because it is just so pigmented. And I also work with a dish that has one side alcohol, one side acetone because they do work a little bit different with alcohol inks, I find. So I like to go in with uh, alcohol as my base and then I'm going to drop some of the Coco and Claire alcohol ink down and I'm going to blend it out with acetone because that's going to create a little bit more crisp lines. And I do this a couple of times, which is going to create a really cool kind of layered look and you could just stop there that looks like clouds but I wanted to add some chrome stamped clouds here so taking my sticky uh, stamping polish in white and then that same white pearl color that you guys saw I'm gonna stamp my two different clouds down I did go in with number 93 that milky white for the second cloud and I actually didn't end up liking how that looked but that's okay because I'm gonna show you how to fix it so I'm gonna do the exact same steps with another cloud and I do outline in the sticky stamping polish in the white I just really like how that looked but I I'm gonna go take a little bit of that center of that white and re-stamp that cloud so it looks chrome again. I think that that looks a little bit better, but this is how the cloud look turns out. So this is a fantastic background for unicorn nails, uh, plain nails, or just creating really fun scenery for an okay. accent nail on its own. I just love learning this technique. So the next look that we're gonna do is this layered metallic star look, and we're gonna take Coco and Claire's Glamorous for this. This is a recent new release and quickly becoming a staple in my collection. It is a milky base with multicolored uh, like chrome flakes in it and the star stamping plate. Now I did do this on a neutral tipped base, which I feel like you could do that or you could just leave it on a clear tip. Either would look really good with it, but I am only going to do one coat because I kind of liked the nude peeking through that you can see here. The Coco and Claire collections that this was released in is actually a builder consistency, so it does apply a little bit thicker. Now Fusion's Jupiter top coat is one of my favorite matte glitter top coats that they released. I love all of them truthfully, uh, but this one in particular is a staple in my collection because I love the shade of gold that they picked for it. So I'm going to go in with my matte top coat to create uh, my base and I love using glitter matte top coats for this. Then we're going to stamp on some metallic stars here. I really like this 196 stamping polish. It is just such a beautiful kind of coppery chrome type of look. And then we are also going to use some other shades of gold too. I'm going to use number 50 one, which is a really nice uh, gold. It's a little bit more gold than say 123 and a definite staple in my personal collection. And I'm also going to use number three, which is a super yellowy gold, but I like the contrast of it with the other two golds in this particular look. So I left this design shiny, but I think it would look really good matte too, and you would definitely see those glitters poking out. This is the next look that we are gonna create. It has some floral stamps, some lattice, and then a really cool background. So I have these pink tips in my collection all ready to go, but if you don't have them, you could just use any sort of milky pink that you have in your collection. And Coco and Claire's Velvet Matte Top Coats in pink. I love the shade of pink that they picked for this. So I'm gonna put that down as my matte base. And then I'm gonna use these three stamping polishes here. This first light pink one is actually kind of like a milky pink. It is so pretty and great for any sort of layered looks. I'm going to stamp this one down and then I'm going to go in with a little bit of a brighter pink to stamp the little circles that are right beside it. Take your time to kind of line these ones up because they are a little bit tricky to line up and you can see after I stamp it down that I actually didn't get the left corner lined perfectly. I'm not going to take it off though. Instead, I'm just going to work with what I have and we are going to fix how it looks. I am going to go in with a matte top coat right on top of this 
This is not necessary, but I do this in case I mess up with my floral images next. Uh, that way I don't have to take that whole lattice look off. It kind of acts as like a barrier for my floral looks. So for the floral, I'm going to go in with white right where we did that kind of messy look that didn't line up perfectly. And I do this a lot with stamping. I just kind of fix it if it doesn't line up perfectly. Uh, and then I'm going to do some more of that white chrome powder. See, I told you guys, it's a hands down favorite. I use it all the time. And we are going to use the light pink as well as that kind of brighter pink for the next two layers here. Now, this image did take me a little bit to line up. And you can see that I have the clear jelly stamper like card right in the top left corner. I'm just kind of looking at that as I'm lining things up to make sure that I have the proper layers for this particular step. And this bright pink, I think just makes that whole floral look. It turned out so, so pretty with this particular shade. So most of the tutorials that I'm sharing with you guys in this video are from favorites that I've used over the last couple of years. This particular plate was released in a four plate collection, I believe, and all of them are really, really cool. They are floral plates, but also have a little bit extra to them, like this one with like the lattice look. Another one I believe has lace with it. They are so cool. And I feel like these plates are very user friendly as well. I do think that no floral look is complete without using some greenery too. So these two green stamping polishes are actually new to my collection uh, so I can't quite say they're a favorite yet but it's I just really wanted to play with them <laughs> and I really like how they turned out together the two looks of the green if you had a shorter nail that you were working with I think the one big floral image you could just kind of stop there and it would look great but because it is a longer image I did decide to go in with the little floral clusters um, at the front of the plate here I think they look so good it took me quite a while to line up this greenery though and I honestly am not even sure if I did line it up properly I kind of just plopped it down and it worked and we're just gonna stick with that another really good advantage of working with the cocoa and Claire matte versus some of the other mats that I have tried for these particular techniques is that if you have a glitter as your base and you go over top of it with a matte top coat I'll do your art and then go back in with a shiny top coat a lot of times whatever matte you've used it completely changes the way the glitter looks as the base cocoa and Claire's matte top coat does not do that another reason why I absolutely love it and it's really fun to create layered looks looks like this one. We are going to do another staple look and go to for me, which is this really fun knitted pattern. This was my first time, I think, trying it with a glitter background though. And I do really like how it turned out, but we're going to talk about how I think you could make it better if you were doing it a little differently. So prep your tip like normal. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, brush that you just saw me use there. That is from Fusion and I love it for removing dust. It's my only dust brush that I use. We are going to take the Fusion Fortify, one of their recent gel polish launches, this really pretty brown one. It's number 51 I was itching to use this and again you don't have to do it on a neutral base like this you could just do it on a clear base as well uh, but I do find that this needs two coats to be as opaque as I want it to be we are going to use that cocoa and Claire matte top coat again and we are going to use this really fun knitters gonna knit stamping plate now I wanted to talk about this plate a little bit because if you use it layered how it is suggested to use it it does cover up basically your entire nail so I kind of prefer to just use these little uh, like single images and then that way your glitter is gonna pop through of whatever you use for the base I love working with uh, really sparkly glitters like this and a full kind of base because then you get the whole look of the glitters popping through I just think it looks so cool a good plaid stamping plate is definitely a staple in my personal collection so we're going to create this look today i'm going to start with a little bit of the darker neutral base here get it all prepped ready to go and then we're going to go in with this gel polish which is called light as a feather this has a really great consistency it is a little bit runny though so try and work as slow as you can with it I also think it would be fine in one coat here. I did go in with a second coat though, just because I wasn't entirely sure which plaid image I was gonna do and where it was gonna line up. So this is the plaid plate that I'm gonna use. I personally love these two particular images and the stamping polish that I'm gonna use with it is actually a milky stamping polish. It came out in a collection with four different colors that were a little bit see-through and I think it works so good for plaid. Like it just gives like a nice sheer look to it. I wasn't sure if I was gonna use the purple with it or if I was gonna go more of a pink vibe so I put the pink one down first and then I ended up really liking this particular kind of uh, maroon color I thought it worked really good with it now I love plaid when it is matte so I did go in with a matte top coat for this particular look 
quite a few great plaid images on the clear jelly stamper plates but this plate in particular is my go-to okay this look is so fun we're gonna do a really cute fairy design here this would make such a cute accent nail for fairy themed nails i'm gonna go in with this opera gel polish and this is one of the french tip versions and you can see how pigmented it is i'm only gonna do one coat then again we're gonna take some of this fusion glitter matte top coat this, this is in the shade harvest and i tend to use this a lot for designs that incorporate green so floral nails these fairy nails i just use it all the time so we're going to use this plate called land of the fairies and this particular image of fairy wings is one of my go-to's on this image you can connect it to like a fairy body but i tend to just use it on its own and i'm going to take some of these fairy flakes from coco and claire and some clear sticky stamping polish now i haven't actually done this technique before i decided to try it for this stamping video and it turned out pretty cool so we're going to stamp down the clear sticky stamping polish in the image and then i'm going to take some of the flakes and have them on my gloves and just kind of pat them in to the clear sticky stamping polish the only downside to this is some of it did end up sticking to uh, like the matte top coat on the edges here which you can you can get it off but it was kind of hard to see where the image was for the fairy design though it doesn't really matter because I liked the look of the flakes kind of going outside the lines of the outline as well to do the outline, because it is a green image, I'm gonna take stamping polish number 139, a huge staple in my collection for floral nails. It's this beautiful dark green that is borderline black and it just works so good for outlines. So I have a little bit of acetone on this lipstick swatch applicator tool that I use and this is where I'm going to pull some of those flakes up after I've done the outline and I did like some of them kind of hanging off the edge there so I didn't clean them all up like super close but this design turned out so fun I think this would make a great accent nail or tinkerbell nails I really love using fairy stamping plates this design turns out to be one of my favorite ones in this video. Let me show you how I put it together. We're gonna take some of these reflective gel polishes that came out in a collection of seven, and I picked four of them here to do a really fun marbling look with it. So similar to the ocean nails, I'm just gonna kind of randomly put them down on the nails here, and I do have like a wipe off to the side that I wipe off if I transfer any of the colors to the different uh, brushes here. When I marble with glitter gel polishes, I don't don't tend to drag into each other I kind of just plop them down the nice thing about these cat eyes though is they have a reflective glitter that when you use the cat eye magnets it's almost like the reflective glitter kind of separates from the colored pigments it gives a really cool look and it actually looks really cool matte too which is exactly what I'm gonna do as a matte top coat this is the stamping plate that I am going to use today it is a really fun collaboration plate and I'm gonna take some of the black sticky polish here with the crystal image and stamp it down I'm gonna do the same technique with the flakes on top of it because I wanted them to look really sparkly when we top coated them. Remove the excess flakes and then with the acetone that I showed you guys in the last one. Then we're going to go in with a black sticky polish again which is another favorite of mine because I prefer using this one to the normal black. I find it a little bit more pigmented and it dries a little bit uh, slower so it's a little bit easier to work with I find. But I'm going to stamp that down and then you can see the crystals kind of poking through. They turned out really neat. I'm going to stamp it again because I didn't get the corner exactly how I wanted it so you can see that I removed basically all of the image except for that top corner and I'm just gonna re-stamp it down instead of removing it and starting all over now I thought this image was a little plain with just the moon so I'm gonna do these little dangly drop things from the cuticle and it turned out super cool I really like how this came together and I think it would look kind of cool matte too I just love how the colors kind of pulled away from the black pigments and it turned out like such a cool look. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hoped it helped you with some different items that are out there that are great staples to add to your collection. Comment below and let me know what some of your favorite products are that you're reaching for lately. Make sure you're following me on all my social media and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!